Two wins to Ford so far today, but consistency and aggregate on points put Stephen Richards on pole for this one. Craig Lowndes alongside him on the front row. Paul Radisich and Mark Larkham on row two. Mark Scaife, our championship leader, alongside Garth Tander. Then it's Ellery and Tony Longhurst. Yeah, doesn't that reverse grid mix things up a bit? Greg Murphy starts out a nine. Neil Crompton alongside in ten. Jason Barg one and not having a good day. So two, Larry Perkins. Russell Engel after that jam gearbox finds himself starting out of 13th and Paul Wheel out of 16. We go further back, Cameron McConville alongside Todd Kelly, Paul Morris beside Steve Reed. Row 11, Dougal McDougal and Craig Baird. Then it's Alan Heath and Rick Bates on row 12. Mike Emery back there in 25th alongside Mick Donoghue, Rodney Forbes. Boy, he's been in some battles today. John Faulkner too. Problem with a sticking throttle apparently. Hope the team have fixed that one for Heath 3. Cameron McLean, the Queenslander, and all sorts of dramas in the Greenfield car this weekend. Brad Jones, too, not having a day he'd like to remember. Glenn Seaton very much struggling with the flu this afternoon. Both he and Neil Crompton, who says he picked it up from Glenn in the last few days, have been having oxygen in between the heats here. Pure oxygen is a means of trying to keep themselves alert and focused for all of this afternoon's action. Fascinating scenario laying ahead. This really has been a fight back by Ford. Four teams have been saying this is the first time they've run this new Tiger spoiler on the front of the four, which is effectively a, a VT Commodore front. And there's the point situation after race two, and that's fascinating. Radisic, Scaife, Lowndes and Richards. Now, if any one of those four drivers wins heat three, they're going to win the day. So we've got a real battle on our hands here in the final. Mark Larkham a little bit further adrift, two points behind Tanda there too. So this should be a ripper. Craig Lowndes. Study of concentration as he awaits the start. 21 laps this one. The third and final race of the day. We could see some real changes to the structure of this championship too, particularly the battle for second place. Glenn Seaton was 37 clear of Garth Tander coming into this round. He had a non-finish in race two and is starting, as you saw, well down the order in the third race of the day, struggling very much. I tell you, you saw on the warming up lap, you saw the um, the muck and dirt off the line. You wouldn't want to get, once your tyres are hot, get pushed off line until you'd be really in the trouble to pick all that lot up. We've been lucky with the weather here today. Some ominous clouds overhead, but there's been no rain. Will it be Lowndes or Stephen Richards who launches off the line in the third and final race of the day oh, for Lowndes. round 10? Lowndes oh, in no, big Richards. trouble. Richards out of there. Look at Larkham. He and Radisic are away. Whoa. So too tender and scape. That's a rotten start for Craig Lowndes. God, disastrous start. Terrible start by the reigning champ. He really bogged it down there. He's lost a lot of track position as they head down to turn one. Stephen Richards, a brilliant job in the Kmart car. Paul Radisic up the inside of the minor 10 forward. They're going to oh, go oh, side by oh, side at turn one. Yeah, he's in a good position for the next. Oh, that's Stephen Ellery. Still battling position as they come up toward the hill the first time. Radisic has won out, though. He goes ahead of the minor 10 car as this big field oh, sort the themselves out. Alan Heath in trouble. Right at the back there in the Cooper's Falcon. The rat just muscled his way past Larkham, didn't he? Oh, look at Tander. Tander as well. Up the inside goes Garth Tander. Great move on the minor 10 oh. forward, but Larkham wants to fight back. Doesn't want to argue. Doesn't want to dent that new Falcon too badly on its first race appearance. Slots back in behind the Valvoline machine. Good aggressive move by Tander. That puts him up the order. So to the Caltex Havoline Ford. And there's John oh, Faulkner. Faulkner. That sticking throttle problem. They obviously haven't been able to fix it. Faulkner out of action. As they continue down the front straight, Stephen Richards in the Kmart Commodore leading the way. There he is. Look at the gap back to Paul Radisic in second place. Tander just holding out. Mark Larkham. There's Mark Scaife. Tony Longhurst. Hasn't he rocketed up the order too? Haven't we had some variety here this weekend? Two Fords winning. This is the first time we've had two Fords winning two races at around since Winton in 1998. It's been a long drought. For the Blue Oval supporters, but they're fighting back here at Calder Park Raceway this afternoon. Oh, there, it's so on board with Radisic. There's not a lot of room there, is there? Yeah, you, just, you see it puts him on the uh, in perfect position for the next uh, right-hander. There's no way that uh, Larkham could, uh, could fight it, really. That's through turns one and two yeah. for the first time. Tandem positioned beautifully behind the Mitre 10 car. Come up the end of the back straight. Fast lap from... Stephen Richards, it's a standing time too, so first flying lap across the line, he drops a 57.91. But these guys getting down to the assortment of their best four tyres for the final race. We can expect those times to slip up a little bit. Look at it, it's very, getting very dark and very gloomy at Calder Park Raceway. It's in the odd drop of rain. 
Yeah, it did look like rain on that camera, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, on did. the lens of that. Keep an eye on that, but it's getting very dark. Oh, yes, that's, that's rain. Well, I, I said at the top of the call we've been lucky, but... The heavens maybe just starting to open up a little bit. Paul Radisic sitting in second place at the moment, and this rain, if it comes down harder, could really change this race. Could just be a sprinkle. Keep an eye on that, as will the teams in pit lane with their fingers crossed. To be the Kmart team, Stephen Richards. And a oh, look at this lot. Drama. Paul oh, Wheel. Paul Wheel. Craig Baird obviously involved in that as well. He's been in more fights than Sonny Liston today, hasn't he? <laughs> hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and Jay Thurble Machine back on the line, but he's pumping out a bit of smoke. Yeah, it's... And that left rear tyre's rubbing. Oh, that's the end of that thing. It's rubbing badly on the guard, yeah, isn't it? Bad. Looks like Baird has suffered the same fate on the opposite side on his car. We have seen this situation before. Sometimes they clear. Look at that, the two Fords. The tyre's rubbing. So the Pertec Falcon of Craig Baird battles on as they come down through turn one once again. The order at the moment, Richards just, just over a second ahead of Paul Radisic. Tander in third. Larkham in fourth, Scaife in fifth, Longhurst, Lowndes back in seventh. Can you believe that after starting off the front of the grid? Murphy, Bargwana now up to ninth, climbs himself to the top ten. And Neil Crompton, too, rounds out the top ten. So a good recovery from Bargwana. I wonder if uh, Larkham had any little sort of problem in the first lap because uh, they sort of got it, got past him, or well, not easily, but um, they were sort of all over him, and now he's all over the back of Tander, so one, I don't know whether... One of them maybe if the tyres just had to come yeah, up the temperature yeah, there, exactly, it's quite yeah. cold here, it's only 14 degrees on track, so maybe as the, the tyres came right up to temperature, now Larkham starting to really get on the attack and chasing down Garth Tander in the meantime, Radisic has been able to pull clear of Tander, and Tander is leading this freight train from third back, there you see out the front, the Shell Helix on board camera, riding with in fact, that's Mark Larkham, I should say. I'll stand corrected. The minor 10 Ford looking ahead to Garth Tander in third place. Scaife in behind Larkham, and then Longhurst in sixth. And how good is this racing? I don't know whether this Tiger Spoiler has done the trick, but the Falcons are very competitive here. They're running neck and neck with the Commodores. They've been doing it all oh, day. Oh, Crompton. Just climbed himself into the top 10. And he's got damage on the back of the car there. So Crompton in no... Oh! Oh, oh no, there's that Ashby. Trevor Ashby, yeah. I was just going to oh, say, he's dear. got no luck. Well, that added to that story. Oh, that's the end of that one, isn't it? Rotten day for oh. Trevor Ashby, two starter motor problems. Oh, look. Beginning a race two. So Crompton gets it back into the battle. Alan Heath sneaks through on the inside, but I don't think Neil will be continuing this. Oh, look this. at the state of that thing. Oh. Severe damage, they're both oh. heading for pit lane. So unfortunately, the second of the Ford Tickford cars comes out. They might be able to fix that and get him back into the race, but he's way out of contention. So too Trevor Ashby. Big damage on the Lansville car. And here comes nice Junior Steve Johnson. Johnson. So busy times in pit lane at the moment. Drama for two of the Fords. So that smoke <laughs> from the back of that guard. Let's have a look under the front of. Not quite sure what Oh, oh yeah. look at this. This is amazing. Tried to limp it back to the pits, but there's so much damage to the front of the car, he couldn't even maintain steering. So he's had to park that on the entry to pit lane. Look it's at this. Oh, look at this. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's Todd Kelly, I should say, and John Bow. <laughs> <saw that. laughs> it's, it's the old two. duo again. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. Oh, a bit of hustle from here. The Repco Commodore, Cameron McConville. The Big Kev Commodore, Paul Morris in there too. This is the battle a bit further back in the pack. Bow in a 12th position. Kelly 13th, McConville 14th, Morris 15th. And Glenn Seaton back there in 16th. It's incredible, isn't it? When you look at the speed that car had at Winton and the trouble they're having getting it to work at Calder Park. Let's take a close look at a few incidents here on the Shell Helix replay. And that's the aftermath of Crompton. Looks like Larry. Yeah, Larry. Back oh, there. and that's where Stephen got his whack there, obviously, with something. Yeah, that was Larry, wasn't it? it was, uh... Didn't see how the reaction started. There's the aftermath, though. That was a fair old whack as well. Big damage to the Optus Commodore. You can see him trying to limp back into the pits. It's a great battle here. Up at the front of the pack, Garth Tander defending hard in third position from this tremendous battle. Larkham in behind him, Scaife in there too. Longhurst in the Caltex, Haveline Ford, Louds on the back of the Falcon.
Murphy in eighth, Bargwana in ninth, Ingle now climbs up into the top ten. Looks as though Radisic has been able to close that gap slightly on Stephen Richards, our leader as well. So Radisic being able to pull clear of, of Tanda, that's aiding his bid to try and chase our leader down. Here's Garth Tanda. I think if Tanda, I was going to say, if uh, Larkin could get out of this right up the backside of Tanda, I think you see the fall when he gets into like fifth and sixth gear starts to now you see it starts to gain on the uh, on the hold but he needs to come out there right up his bottle to be able to get past him at the end of the straight and then he's still going to get past him damage to the front of larry perkins yeah. commodore there yeah mate larry might be going to see the official he's had a busy day up there yeah, today, really he's got he? a season ticket today <laughs> hasn't he really great shot of the end of the main straight at calder park as the cars break hard over the bumps for turn one paul radisich meanwhile 0.7 of a second behind our race leader Stephen Richards. Shell four driver trying everything to get in front. Keep in mind, Radisic, Scaife, Lowndes and Richards, any of those four drivers win this final heat, they will win the day overall. So there's a real incentive there for Paul Radisic to try and get his way in front of that Kmart Commodore because that'll be the first Ford round win for season 2000. Here's Brad Jones who had problems with a broken wishbone on the car heading into this race. The team were working frantically to make sure it was repaired in time for the race they've done it. look at this battle going on here mclean all over the back of dougal mcdougal coming for the ride as well rodney forbes he manages to sneak past mclean the final turn that brings them onto this long drag strip at calder park they work up towards 260 kilometers plus here and then it's hard under brakes for turn one mclean sitting in behind Forbes. Just incredible the level of competition, isn't it? That's a battle for 18th, 19th and 20th. Used to be the old thing in touring cars, if you made the top 10, you were going well. These days, if you're in the top 20, you're doing a fair old job of it. And the margin separating them too, Mark, in terms of lap times are so minimal. There is just nothing in it. Incredibly close. It looks like uh, Stephen Richards has got the measure of Radisic at the moment because he's uh, two tenths of a second quicker than our last lap. Ingle, currently in 10th position. He's just passed Bargwana, in fact, so that puts him up to ninth. Check this out in the replay. So Russell Engel continues to defend. It's been a rough old day for Russell. That gearbox problem in heat one has cost him dearly. You cannot afford to have the slightest mechanical itch in this race. Oh, Larry Perkins up the inside yes. as they break hard. There's going to be contact between the two. <laughs> no. Oh. Yes. Bargwana gives him racing room, but they're giving each other the elbow. Bargwana's hanging on as they come up toward turn two. Turn three over the hill, continuing to attack in the Valvoline Cummins machine, but Perkins got him. Let's have a look at that written replay. There's, yeah, angle up the inside on the brakes. This is one lap beforehand. Yep, it was a nice tidy move. Larry had a sniff as well. He had to wait another lap before he got past the Valvoline Cummins machine. That put Engel up to ninth, Bargwana to tenth. And then Larry took Bargwana, dropping him back to 11th place. I reckon Barks might be struggling with something because he didn't, uh, you know, he wasn't trying to protect protect the corner at all, was he? You know, he gave um, Russell plenty of room, and if you look there, Larry's pulled out a decent amount of ground in half a lap. Well, if you've just joined us, Stephen Richards leads the way from Paul Radisic and Garth Tanda. The gap closing two between Radisic and Richards. Larkham in fourth, Mark Skate fifth, Craig Lowndes, the defending champion, has gone from the front row of the grid back to seventh, courtesy of that bad start, unfortunately. We'll look further back through the field for you. Russell Ingle, there he is now up to ninth position, Bargwana tenth. John now rounds out the top 12 at the moment. Stay with us. The closure of race one coming, race three rather, coming your way right after this. Stephen Richards leading the way in the final race of the day for round 10 of the Shell Championship Series. You can see there, though, as they work down that back straight, the gap between Richards and Paul Radisic is starting to close. Radisic, our race one winner today. There's been two victories for Ford here at Calder Park. Mark Larkin winning race two. Well, this is a tremendous battle. These two have been swapping some very fast lap times over the past 12 circuits. That last time around, Radisic dropped three tenths of a second on Richards and allowed him to pump it out to just over a second. We'll check it on our timing monitor this time across, but this is an intense battle now for the lead. Oh, and it's pretty close now. Both these drivers know that whoever wins this race will win the round overall. 1.1 seconds, so Richards has done it again. Just a tenth of a second faster than Radisic this time around. This is intense stuff. 
both drivers trying to find an advantage as they pick their way through traffic. And Richards knows he cannot afford to even blink in Radisitchel Pouch. Over the rise, the inside of Alan Heath's Falcon. Yeah, Rad he did a good job of getting out of the way. Gave him room. Radisic under brakes at the end of the back straight. It's been a very strong performance from the Shell driver. Currently fifth in the Shell Championship Series point standing, some 77 points behind Craig Lowndes. Radisic well in this battle with the first of the double points races coming up at Queensland Raceway in September. A double World Cup champion when it comes to touring car racing. Paul Radisic spent many years overseas campaigning a factory Ford Mondeo in the British Championship and drove for Peugeot for a while, for a while there as well. Came to Australia a couple of years ago, but has had a winless run until this season in terms of the championship. And now, today, cracked it for his second oh, race win. Steve Ellery. The championship. There's Ellery. I'll tell you what, the Ford supporters, and I'm sure Ford Motor Company will have their fingers crossed. One of these Ford teams can at least take one round win this year. Because don't forget, in 1998, they only won one championship round. They repeated that in 99 with Jason Bright's sole victory at Hidden Valley. They are staring down the barrel this year of not having won one single Shell Championship round in 2000. And they've got four more chances to do it. Time running out for the Blue Oval. <laughs> so Kelly and Bowie are still together. That's a great battle here between the veteran and the youngster. We saw them come together. High-speed circumstances earlier on in the day. Now they're glued together. It's almost a rubber band between them at the moment. John Bauer carrying our Be Clear and Simple onboard camera. Swing on to the main straight once again. Glenn Seaton doing a marvellous job here as well, given that uh, he's not a well boy at the moment in the Ford Tickford Racing Falcon. He sits in behind this great, great battle going on between Bow and Kelly. has been raging for a couple of laps now. The Caterpillar Ford driver sits in 12th position, Kelly 13th and Glenn Seaton in 14th. Uh, what about the in-car camera stuff we had in... Oh, a little, oh, bit, of a a little bit of a tap there. Oh, more than a love tap there from Todd <laughs> Kelly. We had some in-car camera stuff of uh, Glenn Seaton of his face and he was driving around in qualifying cough and he's spluttering. It looked uh, quite strange, actually. He actually had the week off work, which is quite rare for him. And he's talking today about taking next week off as well. He's just not well. He said he needs time off to recuperate, particularly with the endurance races coming up. He talked to him. He's just about lost his voice. He's not well at all. He's battling here, though. Ford Livet in-car camera. Riding with Glenn Seaton, currently second in the Shell Championship chase. Locked in a battle for 12th position between John Bow and Todd Kelly. Twice champion in the series, 93 and 97. It's been a while between drinks for Glenn. Took a race victory, of course, very recently for FTR at Winton. So we jump aboard, be clear and simple telemetry on board the Ford Credit Car. Look how close he gets behind. To Kelly as they dive on the brakes at the end of the straight. I'll tell you what, that Carl Todd Kelly's is pretty quick. Yeah, he's done a good job this year. Of course, won that heat at Canberra during the GMC 400 earlier. He has dramatically improved his performances this year over last year as he comes to grips with what's required to drive these V8 monsters. Tells the story about 240 kilometres an hour before they break hard on the approach to the corner at the end of the back straight through the S's. Glenn Seaton hard at work trying to improve on his 14th position at the moment. Meanwhile, at the front, 1.5 seconds. Stephen Richard just pumping it out on Paul Radisic. Shell Ford has had no answer for the Kmart machine here this afternoon. This is strong, consistent race pace from our race leader. Paul Radisic almost 1.6 seconds in arrears of the Kmart Holden. Well, what a day this has turned out to be in terms of against all odds victories. Four laps remain in this one. Race one we saw Dick Johnson racing, and here's the second of their campaign. As Stephen Johnson into the pits again, and apparently there is damage to the back of that car, one of the back doors. But as I, I mentioned, a great win for Paul Radisic, his second ever victory in the Shell Championship Series. It came in race one today. And a much needed win for Ford. Then we saw Mark Larkin break through for his first in race two today. And the Kmart team, they are certainly coming good. Stephen Richards, to give you an idea, has been improving his qualifying this season. It's the fifth meeting in a row he's qualified inside the top ten. So the Kmart team are definitely making inroads. Greg Murphy has got a new car this weekend. They're still working on that one. But there's a great likeness between the cars now in terms of their design and build. And the drivers say, thankfully, they can now work together 
like getting both of their cars up the front. Yeah, they can compare their setups accurately and see which one works best. That's always the advantage of having a two-car team. Two drivers can go out on totally different setups. They'll find which is the most effective, and then they can both duplicate that setup. And they haven't been able to do that previously with the Kmart team, but now they've got identical cars, so it's really going to help them in their technological chase. But some new people on board there, Ross Holder, Oscar Fear and Otto, the man who used to be chief engineer of Russell Ingalls' car, switched over from the Perkins camp this year. So there are changes happening at Kmart Racing, and they are really starting to gel as a team. Keep in mind, they're only under the Kmart collars, only a relatively new team. It does take a while to gel into a genuine championship and race winning operation. Richard's, uh, Richard's definitely got, to, got the handle on Radisson. He's just putting a tenth of a second a lap. So it's, I don't think there's any problems for Richards. 1.8 seconds the gap now, almost two seconds. So Richards has been inching away from the shell forward. This is the battle behind them though. Mark Larkham in fourth. Oh, this is going good. Tony Longhurst, Craig Lowndes locked in there too. He has been able to do nothing about this after qualifying on pole position. And due to the aggregate score, finding himself on a front row starting position for heat three. He finds himself down in seventh place. It's been a pretty disappointing day for our reigning champ. The enforcer continues his charge up through the order as well. Has now gotten past Greg Murphy into eighth position. We take a look out the back of Mark Larkham's Mitre 10 forward. You see Good drive Mark Scape, now. yeah. Really got clear of Scape there, didn't he? Longhurst in behind Scape, then it's Craig Lowndes. The important thing to remember here too, that Mark Scape, after race two, had extended his lead over Seaton to 173 points. Just doing our sums on what that lead will be after this race, but this has been an important championship round for Mark Scaife. As he tries to build on that bumper. He came into this round 136 points up on his nearest pursuer, Glenn Seaton. Seaton's not had a good day today. And Scaife has been able to capitalise on the point situation. He said today too that it was important to just consolidate. That's exactly what he's done. Coming into this round, there were still 640 points up for grabs. Don't forget there's a couple of big double points endurance races coming up. The FAI 1000 not too far away and the Queensland 500 is coming up as well. The first of the big enduros where co-drivers become a big factor and Lowndes and Scape. What a strong combination they are going to be for Holden Racing. You ride there with Lowndes. He'll be teaming up with Mark Scape, unlike last year. But a fantastic performance from Stephen Richards. He takes the race victory and thoroughly deserving as well. The round victory as well. A brilliant performance from him. Paul Radisic home second, Garth Tander third, and Larkham will finish fourth. I've got to say, it's nice to see the Fords do good. Isn't it? There's Angela, Stephen's wife, who is here today with her son Clayton. And Rick Bates, he's uh, been practicing a bit of his rallying <laughs> today, rally. hasn't he? <laughs> the colour scan forward. He too will be teaming up with Brett Peters in that Falcon for the upcoming endurance events. But there's the man of the moment. Stephen Richards did it at the GMC 400, took out that inaugural street race in fantastic circumstances in Canberra earlier this year. And he takes out the round here as well at Calder Park. And so, so good, uh, Greg. If that uh, under tray does make the difference, has made the difference, that's going to be so good. Well, Stephen Richards takes out the round and race three. Radisich home second, Garth Tander third, Larkham fourth. Scape rounds out your five, and Russell Ingall sneaking inside the top eight as well. So a, a good performance from Russell Ingall of Sprite problems earlier in race one today. Murphy, Perkins, Barguana and Bow. That's how they finished.